So I'm Bob Baxley. Uh, on our team, I'm really the algorithm and analysis guy. And I'm Roy Thompson, and I'm more of the uh, implementation, uh, low-level, get the radio to work guy. And we're Roy teams at Lenium. So Roy played football in college at Carnegie Mellon. I did rowing in college at, at uh, Georgia Tech. And so we've got a kind of a competitive drive, which is necessary for these sorts of competitions. So yeah, the greatest thing about a competition is that it forces everyone to kind of stay up that extra night. You, you want to show that you know you're the best and that you can compete against the top teams in the world in this particular skill. It's definitely opened our eyes to different ways of approaching the problem that we might not have otherwise. Just getting this thing to work at all is really impressive. So that there's 20 teams out there who have been able to build a radio um, that can autonomously communicate across 10 nodes in a really congested spectrum environment is, is just really impressive. So there's a few components of SC2 expertise that are required. So there's low-level implementation, there's waveform design and the math behind that, and then there's machine learning. And between us, we have all those skills covered. SC2 is a really unique combination of being able to know the theory, both in radio land and machine learning land, and being able to implement it in real time. So we're pretty unique in that expertise, that combination of expertise. Yeah, so I think our design goal from the beginning, before we even knew like what a winning approach would be, was to make the radio as flexible as possible. We figured that if we can get that flexible radio, then we can, we, the reasoning stuff will, will fall in place. It's been said that if you have a strong mind but a weak body, you're, you're not useful. So our real key was to, to make the, the body, the radio, strong so that when we started applying the machine learning to it, it would be effective. In PE2, it was all about collaboration, so we were pretty conservative with our approach. There was plenty of spectrum holes that we didn't pursue and exploit because the scoring was built in such a way that they didn't require that. But in the final competition, um, it's been opened up a bunch, and you have to exploit all the spectrum holes and get data through with those holes if you want to win. So that adds complexity, and we think we're, we're happy with that. We think complexity favors us, but it also adds opportunity for our radio, which we think can perform at a very high throughput um, to shine. Yeah, so being the top team in P2, we know that we've got a target on our backs and every team is trying to, to get to our level, so we need to take our team to the next level so that we can stay at the top and win the final. There's a few aspects of that problem that, that are really hard. Uh, one is you're designing a radio that is a wireless communicating device from scratch. Whereas your chip in your cell phone can speak LTE, um, we're having to start from scratch and do everything that chip does and then some. And then once you have that radio, you have to build a reasoning engine that can do the collaboration and can also avoid interfering with the other nodes in the environment. So what the Spectrum Challenge uh, is, is aiming to do is create technology that makes that work better. And the little nugget that they've allowed is for collaboration between all these radios so that they can intelligently deconflict without having to uh, know very much at all about each other. So our team uses that information to reason about how we should move in the spectrum and about how aggressive we should be with spectrum usage. If our radio makes an action and then we observe over the collaboration channel that it has impacted another team in a negative way, then our radio will take that information into account when it makes future decisions about what to do. At Zelenium, we've actually quantified how much collaboration helps. We have radios where we can turn on and off collaboration inputs into our reasoner. And when we turn on collaboration versus when we turn off collaboration, we see a 50% improvement in our performance. So 50% might not sound like a lot, but in the terms of radio, that's a huge amount. That means you could have 50% more devices operating in the same spectrum without having to change anything else. Just by adding AI and machine learning and collaboration. What's exciting about SC2 is that we'll be able to prove whether collaboration and in artificial intelligence in really congested spectrum environments is useful. Right now, wireless spectrum is a very scarce resource. Any you know, small percentage of efficiency you can add is that much less of spectrum that a company has to pay for or um, get a license for or whatever. And this will allow them to meet the, their capacity goals um, but while also consuming less of that resource. So after SE2, we're really excited about this technology. We think that it's going to revolutionize how wireless communications work. So 5G, for instance, is a standard, a set of standards that are just evolving now. Um, and there's room in 5G to allow for spectrum sharing and to even allow certain sort of collaboration messages that SC2 imagines. So, I mean, it would be a great honor to win SC2, um, kind of validate all the work that we've been doing over the course of our careers. We're we supposed to hold this up. There's an opportunity possibly beyond SC2 
to evolve this technology into something that's really useful for society. If you win it, you really get to drive the conversation about where the technology goes in the future and building that into a technology that everyone uses. We're Teens Ilenium and we're from Atlanta, Georgia.